You know, 3D movies can really be exciting. There's nothing quite like 3D to make you feel like you're part of the action. Projecting 3D is not technically difficult, but like anything else, to be done well, it must be done right. I'm looking forward to the releases of 3D movies planned for this year. The recent releases have done well, both with the audience and at the box office. I'm sure every theater owner will want to be a part of the 1980 3D revolution. The new technologies and techniques in 3D have made 3D better than ever, but there's still one element that can make or break 3D, the theater. This short presentation is designed to help you present 3D the right way, both successfully and well. First, we'll take a look at what we mean by 3D, how the system works. Then you will go through your theater, from the lamp house to the theater seats, to make sure that every element is fine-tuned for 3D. In this way, we can ensure that your next 3D presentation will be an outstanding success. Before we jump into the hardware, though, let's take a look at the 3D system to see how all the elements fit together. The current standard used for 3D films is the over and under system, in which the two images representing the left and right eye views are stacked one on top of the other within the normal 35 millimeter frame. These images are projected through a 3D projection device whose purpose is to converge the two images on the screen. This device also contains polarizers. The effect of these polarizers is to channel the light so that it will pass through another polarizer at the same angle but be blocked by a polarizer placed at 90 degrees. The 3D projection device polarizes the left and right eye images at 90 degrees to each other. The two images from the film, now polarized, strike a silver screen, a reflective metal screen that will not distort the polarization, and reflect the images back to the viewers. The viewer's glasses are polarized just like the projection system. The viewer then sees the left eye image with his left eye, the right eye image with his right. In true scientific terms, the 3D glasses are called analyzers. But don't call up and ask for analyzers, we still call them glasses. The whole chain of events, the film, the projection device, the silver screen, the glasses, all serve one purpose, to bring the left and right eye views of the camera directly to the film viewer. If it's done right, the effect is stunning. If not, well, it's headaches and eye strain, dissatisfied customers. But with a little attention on your part, I can guarantee a great presentation every time. With that in mind, let's go upstairs and get to work. This is where the magic comes from. If it isn't here, then all the lights, the seats, the usherettes, all the showbiz will never get to the screen. Remember when we talked about 3D, we mentioned polarizers. Well, the polarizers are responsible for the light loss in 3D. No matter how much light you put into that frame of film, only 38% of it will get through the polarizers. This means that everything in the 3D system must be fine-tuned for maximum light output. So we'll start at the beginning and take a look at the light source. This Xeon lamp source is typical of many upgraded theater operations. The bulb is designed to operate over a range of voltages and currents. If you're operating at less than full rated power now, you're in luck. You can increase the power and increase the light output for 3D features. If you're running at the limit now, you might consider putting a higher rated bulb in. You can turn it up for 3D and turn it down and gain longer lamp operating life. If you're using arcs, you can increase the voltage and current in the power supply to increase the light output. But of course, this will burn up the carbons faster. Check with your supplier or your power supply manufacturer before you do this. But not all light gains cost money. Let's look inside this lamp housing to find out if we can't find some free light. First off, light won't pass through dirt. Check out all the areas for light loss. Are the reflectors clean? Do they reflect? Look for stray housing pieces that may be in the light path. Project the open gate on the screen. Is the arc centered? Is the brightness even over the entire screen? Modern lamp houses have a detailed procedure for bringing them into focus. Don't shortcut the setup. One other thing while we're here, the cold mirror. This is a device to keep the intense heat of the arc off the film while allowing maximum light output. 
This will also prevent the arc from burning out the polarizers used in 3D. Make sure you have a cold mirror, or if not a mirror, a piece of heat absorbing glass between the light source and the film. These mirrors are there to protect the film. They should not be removed or replaced with an aluminized mirror. Be sure to check the dowser. Is it opening all the way? This is a sure way to cut out light. That's the lamp housing. We've installed a new bulb of a higher rating and adjusted the power supply to give us more light on the screen. We've cleaned out all the trash that will interfere with the light reaching the screen. And last of all, we've checked the heat absorbing mirrors to make sure they're working and checked the dowser to make sure that it's opening fully. Now, before we go any further, there's one other thing I'd like to check on. Yeah! Mmm, mmm, particularly if it's running. The shutter mechanism in your projector has been optimized to the pull-down mechanism to give you minimum ghosting travel and maximum light on the screen. If the manufacturer could have gotten more light out of the projector, he would have. I don't think cutting or changing the shutter angle is a way to increase more light output. I wouldn't touch the shutter angles. You probably already have several different aperture plates for various film formats. None of them will work for 3D. Sorry, the 3D image occupies more of the available area of the film than does the standard 133 to 1 image. There are two ways to solve this. The easiest way is to leave the aperture plate out. On some projectors, this may work out. On some, you may find you are projecting the soundtrack on the wall. The second method, while more difficult, will yield better results. Obtain another 133 aperture plate. Carefully file the aperture out to match the 3D image size. Do it once, and then you'll always have a 3D aperture plate. Remember, none of your standard aperture plates will work. Now we're getting to where the action is. Eventually, you'll have to thread up the feature, and this is where all the confusion starts. There are three different formats used in 3D. To avoid confusion, we specify them by the center-to-center -center distance used on the film. The first is called 0.387. It's the one with the large bar in the center of the frame. We call this the septum. It divides the 3D frame. The thinner line is the frame line. 0.375 is balanced. The frame line and the septum are of equal widths. 0.363 is the opposite of 0.387. The septum is the thin line, the frame line thick. So how can you tell which one you have? You can't, unless the distributor tells you, or you call 3D video and ask. And what difference does it make anyway? Well, the septum is the only way we have of distinguishing between the left and right eye views. This is very important when you're threading up the projector. With the film in the gate, you should be able to see the left and right eye symbols from the alignment film in their proper position. We're almost ready to project the film, but we've forgotten the most important element, your projection lens. As with the lamp housing, check this out for dirt, scratches, things that will interfere with the light. 3D seems to have the ability to highlight every flaw in the optical system. This lens represents one of the cheapest investments you can make in getting more light to the screen. Focal length, which one? If you're using a, a standard flat lens and you have a 1.85 screen, the focal length will have to be 0.7 times the focal length you use for flat. If you're in doubt as to which focal length to use, contact 3D Video and we can supply you with a chart to explain which focal length to use. You'll also need a projection device. 3D Video Corporation manufactures an excellent projection device. This unit encompasses only first quality, first surface mirrors so that all the light that leaves your projector reaches the screen. Glass means reflective and refractive losses. No other system is as bright or gets more light to the screen than the 3D video mirror box. Mounting it is quite simple. The box attaches to adapter tubes that screw into the projection lens. Use only as many adapters as necessary to clear the projector mechanism. Once mounted, these tubes can be left in place as they do not interfere with the normal light path from the projector. The mirror box will now slip onto this adapter tube. Before we do that, let's take a look at the 3D picture without the mirror box. 
This is what the picture should look like without the mirror box. The line in the center of the screen is the septum. The framing is adjusted to place it in the exact center. Now the mirror box is mounted. The mirror box takes the upper image and brings it down. The lower image is brought up. These are easily adjusted with the separate adjustment screws. On an alignment film, the end result will look like this. Any horizontal error can be corrected by rotating the box slightly. On the feature, you can do the same thing if you know what to look for. Notice that the two images are vertically aligned. The horizontal misalignment of the images is the 3D. Any image can be framed up if there are strong horizontal lines for guides. Often the opening credits will be a useful guide. So let's review what we've done so far. We've cleaned and adjusted the light source for maximum light output. We've made and installed a new aperture plate with a 3D aperture. We've threaded the 3D film so that the septum is centered in the gate. We've selected the proper focal length lens so that we can fill the screen with the 3D image. And lastly, we installed a 3D projection device that will combine the two images on the screen. So now we're ready to see the show, right? Wrong. There are a few more things that are necessary to make a really excellent 3D presentation. Because of the way the mirror box works, there will be spurious images generated on the screen. To eliminate these, it will be necessary to mask the mirror box. Masking should be done in the center area only. Do this while the projector is running and bring the masking down only as far as necessary to darken the spurious images. The projection port provides a second area for masking. you will probably be able to see the double image created by the 3D lens on the projection port. Again, the center area should be masked. If you are operating without an aperture plate, this is an ideal place to mask off the soundtrack. When you do this, be careful not to get carried away and darken the main image, only enough to darken the spurious images. We've done about all we can in the booth for 3D except check the 3D. So let's put our glasses on and see if it works. With the alignment film running, we should see the left through the left eye, right through the right eye. If this isn't so, then something else is wrong. So let's remove the mirror box for a moment and check the framing. That isn't it, so let's check the polarizers. If you look at the front of the mirror box with your glasses on, the upper polarizer will appear dark to the left eye, the lower one clear. Through the, your right eye, the lower port will be dark, the upper one clear. Reorient the polarizers if this is not the case. Now with the film framed right, the polarizers in straight, let's check the 3D again. Perfect. Well, I guess our work here is done. Let's go downstairs and check on a few more things. All the way down front, let's take a look at this silver screen. Three D will not work without this silver screen. Remember we said it was necessary to preserve the polarization of the light coming from the projector. Now before you decide that you can't afford a silver screen, look at some of the other advantages this provides. Modern screens, such as this one, provide a gain of 2.5 over your matte or white screen. This means two and a half times more light delivered to the theater's seats. Not only will your 3D pictures work, but your flat pictures will be brighter. Now this silver screen is in effect a dull mirror, and that must be kept in mind when it's installed. If it's angled backwards, all the light from the projector will be returned to the projectionist. He'll get a good picture, but he didn't pay for a ticket. On the other hand, if the screen is angled downward, all the light will fall here. It should be set at an angle that will return most of the light to the center two-thirds of the seats. Now, I could give you a bunch of trig formulas on how to figure that out, but there's a much simpler way. Let's take a walk around the theater. Bend down. Stand on a ladder. Find out where all that light's going to. It should be falling on the center two-thirds of the seats. 
while you're taking your tour, particularly in a wide theater, see how the side seats work. Is one side dark and the other side light? That can be cured by curving the screen slightly. While we're here, let's see if all that work in the lamp house paid off. Is the screen evenly illuminated? No hot spots, no dark corners? Good. One last thing, the third place to mask, the screen. For best 3D, we want a good, hard screen edge. If you have drapes, use them. If not, rig a batten with black cloth to cover the unused screen area. 3D is a wide image, 2.35 to 1. You will need to raise the bottom or lower the top to cover the unused screen. Now I guess it's time to see the show. One last thing, glasses. 3D Video Corporation is the world's largest distributor of 3D glasses. We stock a number of different styles, both generic and custom. We can deliver them at a reasonable price, on time, probably from a warehouse near you. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the movies.